Hi. So last time I was talking about love expansion and consciousness. And the reason why I say consciousness is because I think it's something that we have to become aware of and understand how to implement in our everyday lives. And although we are lovable beings by nature without needing to do anything, really, I mean, we are love. But the problem is, is that we grow up and we put up a wall. We start wearing a mask. We start putting up self-protective layers. All of those things hide who we truly are. So if we truly are love, but we're not connecting to it because we don't want to see it, we don't want to believe it, then how is that us really loving ourselves? So yes, love exists. And although we are lovable by nature, and it just is, it doesn't expand until we go back and connect to it and allow that expansion. But that does take conscious effort and it takes an awareness because we are the ones that hold ourselves back more than anybody else ever will. And so again, on this channel, I'm trying to teach us how to go back and really love who we truly are and believe that we're worthy of love by believing that we are lovable. And again, it's you have to really want this process. You have to surrender to it. So for those of you that have really said, you know what, I don't always do things in my life that show that I'm valuable. I don't always do the things that are in my best interest. I don't think I love myself as much as I could. Let's keep going because only with that attitude can we really grow and change and do things that we need to do to really connect to ourselves on a deeper level. Because if you think you already love who you are and you don't think you have any issues, well, great, continue on in your life. But I know for me personally, um, feelings of worthiness, not feeling like I matter, not feeling like I'm good enough, I know those feelings all too well. And although none of them are true, those were all the things that kept preventing me from really, really, truly loving myself. And we believe that we are worthy of love mostly when we can go back and start to really love ourselves first and foremost, which is why I always bring up the inner child. Because I know a lot of people still, why do we have to go back to the past? Why do you keep making me look at things I don't want to look at? Why do I have to keep going backwards in order to move forwards? Because where do you think you got that false belief system from? That was from childhood. That was the foundation that we originally started from. And again, I talk about trauma and abuse and neglect. Because when you experience that on a regular basis... It's really, really hard for us to grow up and believe that we even matter when somebody was telling us that we didn't matter our entire lives in one way or another, whether it was you got shipped off to go live with somebody else, whether a parent walked out on you or parents were yelling at you or you were getting hit or there was sexual abuse, whatever type of trauma it was for you or you were neglected, being completely ignored. All of those things send the indirect message that you mean nothing and that we're not lovable. That's not true. But that's what we start to believe when we're kids because kids cannot experience things like that and think, oh, that didn't matter. Like, that's not affecting me. I'm awesome and amazing. No, that's not the way it real that it realistically works. And I want you guys to understand that. So if you've experienced any of those things, there's a chance that you might not love yourself as much as you think that you do. And we just grow up and we learn how to try to be tough. I'm strong. I'm fake confident. I wear a mask. I'm good at certain things. So I know how to be strong in certain areas. I have a wall up. I don't allow myself to get close to people. I have a bunch of self-protective layers up. I engage in toxic cycles that really prevent me from really being in the moment and just valuing life and really valuing being with myself. 
I have a bunch of defense mechanisms because, again, I don't want to be close to anybody. But we don't realize it because a lot of these behaviors are subconscious. And so, again, if you're not aware of them, that's okay. But part of this channel is recognizing certain behavior patterns. You know, if you're starting to think once again, you know, I don't think I'm as happy as I could be. You know, I tend to complain a lot. Uh, I tend to be angry a lot of the times. You know what? You're right. I'm kind of stuck in a rut. I do the same exact thing every single day. And I'm not super happy with life. I don't really like the person I'm with, but I stay with them because it's comfortable. In fact, I do a lot of things that are comfortable. Yeah, I'm kind of, I like to drink every single day. Or I do drugs all the time. You know, I people please a lot and I overgive. You know, I notice that I always have to be seeking a thrill to even feel alive. So all these things that we start to do and we don't even see it as an issue most of the time because a lot of us do it. And it's just something that we accept as part of adulthood is just as part of life. And we don't have to. And so when I talk about these things, it's not to judge you. It's not to say that, oh, man, everything you're doing right now is completely wrong. And how dare you? No, it's what we do to survive. It's how we know how to survive. It's how we know how to grow up and now relate to other people. If I grew up scared all the time and I was trying to feel safe, how do you think my relationships are going to be? And so you just, you have to take all of that into consideration. But surrendering to this process means going back and really understanding how that all affected you and accepting that it did affect you, whatever your situation was. Again, unless you grew up in a really wonderful home where both parents raised you and helped you build self-esteem and really gave you a voice and just allowed you to be a person and develop on your your sense of self and you had the strongest foundation ever if you had that you're probably not watching my channel (laughs) and i don't know a lot of people that had that and again we're not perfect so whoever raised us they weren't perfect and so we have to take that into consideration we're not blaming anybody it's just we're all human and so we're born into ego we're born not fully understanding why we're even here, just certain things. All we know when we're little is that we want to play. We want people to pay attention to us. We want to feel like we matter. We want everybody to look at us. Spotlight is on me. That's how kids are. And so the more people ignore them, the more they do get criticized, yelled at, abused in different ways. That starts to affect us. Because as I've said before, we start to do things to try even more to impress people or we come up with gimmicks. We come up with different things that we do to try to feel like we do matter, to try to get people to like us, like, like me, look at me, pay attention to me. What is wrong with me that you don't want to pay attention to me? That's where the kid's mind goes. That's kid logic. And so we become adults. And we do the same exact thing. We just do adult behaviors instead. And so the reason why, again, I continue to encourage the inner child work is because when you go back and start valuing yourself on a level that only you can do, your life will completely change for the better. I can almost guarantee you that if you actually go back and do it. And the reason why I say that is because almost everything that I just mentioned earlier, I've done the defense mechanisms, having a wall up, being angry, people pleaser, all of those things. I was doing all of that because I didn't feel worthy of anything. I don't feel, didn't feel worthy of love. I didn't think that I mattered. I always thought people were looking at me like there was something wrong with me, like I was defective. And so I've struggled with all of these things. So I get it. I really, really do. And none of it changed for me until I went back and I started to acknowledge little Rebecca and started to acknowledge all the pain that she was actually in. And I went back and I gave her a voice. I went back 
And I allowed her to finally feel the things that she needed to feel to release that pain that she was still holding on to. We hold on to all of that toxic energy. It does not go away because you became an adult. In fact, one of the things I wanted to mention, because I was talking before about anxious behaviors, it's things that we do to control different things in our environment. What we're doing is we're actually controlling how we feel. And when you think about it, even logically, think about a child that's getting abused in whatever way, you know, you want to think about. Let's say they're getting hit. So, okay, I'm sitting there getting hit constantly in that moment. What is the only thing I have control over? How I feel. So think about that. If all I have control over are my emotions and how I feel, what do you think I'm going to know and learn how to do so well to control my emotions, which usually means shutting down and just not even feeling them anymore because it's way too uncomfortable. And so every time now something happens and I don't like it, it starts to make me feel bad or it hurts or it's unpleasant. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to shut down. Because that's the only thing I know how to do. Because that's the only thing that made me feel safe. That's the only thing that made me feel protected in those moments. And so we become adults. We shut down when we don't like something. Instead of learning how to process through the emotion and getting through the conversation. And confronting whatever issue just popped up. No, I can't confront the issue because there's too much shame and it's too scary. So I want you guys to understand and make that association. And, you know, I mentioned before I wanted to talk about conflict resolution, which I can get into a little bit. A lot of people don't like conflict because they see it as a bad thing instead of seeing it as addressing an issue that needs to be discussed. Conflict doesn't have to be aggressive. It doesn't have to be loud. It doesn't have to be scary. Change your perspective. Conflict resolution is actually you setting a boundary. It's you stating how you're feeling and what your needs are in a given situation. Now, is somebody always going to be able to give that back to you or receive that well? No. And that's what we're scared of, ultimately, is because if I go to you and I tell you, hey, you know what you just said, I didn't really like it or it made me feel insignificant or whatever it was. And then you can start yelling at me. You can cuss me out. You can tell me I'm wrong. You can start doing all kinds of things that I'm not going to have any control over. And it's going to feel scary. And in fact, it's going to remind me of my dad yelling at me and getting aggressive towards me and possibly hitting me for even speaking up. So I get it, the fear. We don't want to say anything because we don't want to associate that with something painful that has already happened to us that we've already experienced. I'm not going back to that. Like, I don't want to bring up those memories. I don't want something that's going to remind me of that type of trauma. No. So we just avoid it. So we don't talk to people. We don't ever express our feelings. We don't give ourselves a voice and we don't set boundaries. And that's Normal. It really is when you come from a toxic environment, for example, because it's scary. And I totally understand that. But I want you to continue to make the connections of why it's scary for you, because it can get better and you can heal yourself and become stronger. Because now at this point, and it took me years to get to this point. So again, don't think it's going to happen overnight. It's not. Doing the inner child work takes years. And as soon as I say that, so many people get turned off and they're like, no, I'm going to go try to find a quick fix. No, this is too hard. I'd rather just continue on. My life's not that bad. It's like, what? it's your choice, whatever you want. But I'm the person I would rather go the longer route to know that I'm actually getting to the root of the problem to know that I'm going to be able to build a strong foundation that's going to really last and give me long 
long-term positive effects in my life. I don't like quick fixes. There's no such thing as a quick fix when it comes to trauma and abuse. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you that, but there isn't. And if somebody's promising that, I guarantee you it's not real. And the minute you try doing anything that's going to be fast or oh, all I have to do is go to a seminar for eight hours and then it's going to just get rid of all my toxic energy and just suddenly all my problems are just going to magically disappear. Yeah, try that. And then now wait for a few months until something happens in your life. You're not going to be able to handle it because you didn't actually resolve anything. You didn't actually learn how to resolve anything. You didn't heal the wounds. So you're still going to get triggered a lot and you're not going to know how to deal with them. So no, there's no quick fix. But that's okay. That's not a bad thing. Like we're here on life. It's a journey. We're learning. We're growing. We are, this is part of our everyday lives. And when you can accept that, it's actually not a bad thing because you can actually see it as you doing something that's best for you. It's something that you're conscious of. It's something that you can continue to grow at and continue to connect on deeper levels of yourself and other people. And that's never a bad thing to do that. So all of this is really positive. It's just, it will be painful sometimes, but accept that as part of the process also. It's totally okay. When you can learn to feel the pain and get through it and understand and accept that pain will happen and you will feel unpleasant and uncomfortable sometimes, this process is going to be a lot easier for you. But it's feeling that unpleasantness because it takes us right back to those memories where we were in pain and we couldn't do anything about it. So I totally get that. That's what trauma does to us. It makes us want to shut down. And that's totally normal. I get it. But we don't have to. And we can learn to not do that. And that's actually what we're continuing to learn right now. So I just want to keep giving you these different perspectives so you can understand why I keep telling you to go back and heal the childhood wounds because it will positively affect every single area in your life. It will. And so again, let's just look at it as this is part of our journey to growth and transformation. And it's a beautiful thing. It really is. And accept the fact that you're in a lot of pain from different things that have happened to you. And that's okay. And so we just need to continue to learn how to get through it. But with the conflict, like I was saying, a lot of people tell me they don't like it because they it scares them. And a lot of times what it starts tapping into is feelings of unworthiness. Like if I get into it with this person, what are they going to do? How are they going to still want to be my friend? Are they going to like me? What's going to happen? Somehow it taps into us not feeling like we're good enough and not feeling like we matter. And so we avoid it because we don't want to feel those things by nature. And again, that makes sense because what was happening to us when we were younger that made us feel like that? Abuse, mostly. So I'm like, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about getting hit. Like, I don't want to think about getting criticized. I don't want to think about the sexual abuse, for example, you know, we self-protect by nature when things like that are happening. And so conflict is a, that's a big one for a lot of people, actually. It's just it, because it really can start to make us feel uncomfortable because people might stop talking to you. I've set a boundary with a few people and I didn't even do it in a mean way. I did it very professionally, very nice. And they stopped talking to me. And it hurt my feelings because it just made me feel like there was something wrong with me. I was like, seriously, all I was doing was asking you not to say certain things to me. But now I have to think those people, they're not probably also not capable of conflict resolution. In fact, that probably triggered them and made them feel like they did something wrong, which probably made them feel defective and that they were unworthy in some way. So see, it works both ways. Anytime I see somebody shutting down, what I see is somebody who can't handle their emotions and somebody who does not think that they're good enough. 
And I only say that because the stronger you get, the more you start to value yourself, the more that you believe that you are lovable. You are going to want to set boundaries with people. You have to. Because that demonstrates self-love. I will not allow toxic shit in my life. I will not allow certain people around me anymore. I won't allow people to do certain things in front of me because it doesn't feel good to me. It's not uplifting my energy. I don't want it. And so the more you go in and heal the wounds and the stronger you get, the more capable you are of doing that. And that raises your vibrations. But you, it's scary to do it at first especially when there's a lot of shame because again, it's going to start tapping into those uncomfortable emotions. And again, we don't know how people are going to react. And that's what's, that's what's scary. And so, and then when people don't want to talk to us anymore, that definitely kicks in the abandonment and rejection, doesn't it? Oh man, you totally just ditched me and you don't ever want to talk to me again. Seriously, just because I confronted you and I tried to set a boundary. That's not cool. But now at this point, I think, do you even want to be friends with somebody like that? No, I don't. I do not. But when there's a lot of shame, it doesn't matter. That's not the way I see it. That's not the way we look at it. All we see it as is somebody just completely rejected us and told us to fuck off, basically. And that's never a good feeling. (laughs) Because why? Again, it triggers the I'm not good enough. What's wrong with me? That's perfectly normal. But again, the stronger you get, the less these things will bother you. And when they do bother you, you will be able to, in that moment, say, you know what? Ouch, that hurt. It's okay that that hurt. You're human. But you know what? I am good enough and I do matter. And if that person can't see it, that's okay. I'm not going to take it personally. It's not going to completely ruin my day or ruin my life. I will continue on because I know that I am worthy. It takes a long time to get to that point, though, so don't even worry about it if you're not there. I'm just telling you what will eventually start to happen. But now something else, this is just something that happened recently, so I'm going to bring it up. I was talking to one of my friends, the acquaintance friend, and she was just sitting there complaining about everything in her life, which I can so relate to because I used to do that so much myself. So I get it. But now when I see other people doing it, I don't like the way it feels. But I know why I was doing it. That was definitely part of my toxic cycles. But so she's sitting there complaining. And for about 20 minutes, I kind of let her rant and rave a little bit because I haven't seen her for a while. But then I was thinking, can we talk about something positive? Like we haven't even had a conversation for a couple months and now that I'm seeing you all I heard all I have heard from you is negativity complaints and then just different things that are going on in the world I'm like I really don't want to hear about that right now I know there's a lot of scary stuff going on and you telling me about it that isn't gonna make anything any better and in fact that's just gonna make me more anxious And so after a little bit, I kind of, I tapped out. I was like, okay, you know, let's switch it up. Or I would try to bring up something positive. And then eventually I had to just excuse myself from the conversation because she just kept going. I was like, okay, I'm done. I didn't say it in a rude way. Don't be rude to people. But you could say, okay, um, I'm just, I'm going to excuse myself from the conversation. Or, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to go eat something or whatever it is. Just politely excuse yourself. (laughs) And I did because that's me setting a boundary. That's not being disrespectful either. I want you guys to understand that there's a big difference between like compassion, for example, and setting a boundary. If I need you to hear me, if I need to be vulnerable because something just happened, or maybe I got triggered and you're asking me what's wrong and I'm really trying to express my authentic self to you in that moment. That's where the compassion comes in. That's where we want people to just say, it's okay that you're feeling what you're feeling, validate whatever it is that I'm feeling, you're human, it's okay. But that's different than setting a boundary. It's okay to set boundaries. Like with my friend, for example, when she was saying all those negative things, I don't 
have to have compassion for her saying negative things. What I need to do is set a boundary because that starts affecting my vibrations. (laughs) And that's what we have to learn how to do. Get ourselves in better situations, get ourselves around higher vibrations. And again, it's not a judgment to anybody else. It's just what you're doing right now doesn't feel good. What you're doing right now is actually toxic. And I'm going to excuse myself from a toxic environment. And that's perfectly okay. And that demonstrates self-love. Again, action, love into your life. Part of doing that is getting away from toxic cycles, getting away from toxic people, staying away from negativity. And so, you know, going back to what's the only thing that we were able to control in our environment when we were younger? It's our emotions, how we felt. So again, we grow up learning and understanding how to do that so well. And we don't even realize that that's what we are learning how to do as children. We just do it instinctively, naturally, by nature, because it's in us to self-protect, remember? But it makes sense to me also why it's the one thing that we do So well, when we shut down, avoid our emotions, avoid certain people, avoid certain situations, avoid unpleasantness, because we're really avoiding the pain that we still are holding on to from our childhood. And this process will be a lot easier again when you guys accept that. Every time as an adult, I shut down. Every time I go and turn around and avoid what I'm feeling right now because it's starting to not feel very good, because it's starting to tap into the worthiness or me feeling unlovable or me feeling like I don't matter. Every time I avoid that, I am avoiding myself. Because you know what? I do have issues of feeling unworthy. I do have issues of feeling empty or dark sometimes or feeling disconnected. That's what I struggled with growing up. And that's okay if that's part of your struggle. Just understand that it can be healed and you can get better. And so that's a positive. It takes a long time though. Like I said, I don't feel those things as strongly now. But it took years of therapy and years of really making connections and years of healing different wounds. Because you can't just heal them all at once. Because the way life happens is you're going to get triggered. And that's going to alert you to something that you need to heal. Somebody's going to say something and you're not going to like it. And you're not going to know how to react to it. But guess what? When you go back and you understand why you didn't like it and what it, how it made you feel in that moment. And the more you can do that, the more you can make those connections. Not only do you get stronger, but then you start learning how to react differently. What's something better I can do now? And a big part of that is to not avoid how you're feeling. Don't shut down. And I know, again, it's easier said than done. And I'm not expecting you guys to just magically wake up and say, okay, I'm never going to shut down again. No, that's not possible. And I know that. But when you start to acknowledge what you're doing and you, you, see it as an issue. And the reason why I say that is because you see it as a block in your life. It's blocking you from expanding your love energy. It's blocking you from making deeper connections. If I shut down and I continue to avoid myself and everybody else and everything else, and I pretend like everything's okay. And I just, you know, put on the mask and I just act like nothing's wrong. How am I connecting on a deeper level? Where, what, where in there is love? That's all fake. That's all self-protection. So safety, that was our number one key. It was our number one thing growing up is to feel safe. And the one thing that made us feel so safe was controlling the one thing that we could control in every situation growing up, which was our emotions. 
That's the one thing that nobody could take away from us. Even if the parents said, shut up, stop crying, stop, whatever. Crying is actually a reaction. It's not even an emotion, not technically. And I'm not saying that crying is not a good thing. Crying helps you release a lot of toxic energy. And on this journey, you will cry a lot when you start tapping into the raw pain. You will. And that's healthy. But it's a reaction. But the actual emotion, the feeling, nobody can stop you from feeling that. And so again, that's the one thing we were able to control. So I want you guys to really think about that. How do you try to control things in your environment now? How do you try to feel safe? What do you do? And I can almost guarantee you it has something to do with your emotions. And once again, when we control our emotions, it eventually does manifest itself into behaviors. So what do I start doing now? I start controlling physical things in my environment to try to make me feel better. And that means interacting with other people, where I'm going to go today, how I'm going to get there. Am I going to rearrange something in my house? How am I going to cook my meal? What am I going to eat? Setting up a routine, making sure I do the exact same thing every day at the same time so that I feel okay. Those are all things that we start to do. It's because we're still holding on to that toxic energy, the pain from childhood. So I'm going to continue to encourage you to go back and heal those wounds because as soon as you start doing that, not only are you really, really proving to yourself that you are lovable because you're going back and loving yourself when you do that. Because remember, other people can't fill our void. So you can tell me you love me a million times a day. It doesn't mean I'm going to believe it. I need to believe it. And the only way I'm going to believe it is to go back and give myself a voice. Go back and comfort myself when I'm going back and re-experiencing all these painful emotions and all these memories that really hurt me. And going back and really saying, it's okay, Rebecca, that you felt all these things, that all of this happened to you. It wasn't your fault, but I understand that you feel like it is. And I want you to tell me all about it. So every time we go back and comfort the inner child, we're demonstrating that we are so lovable. And I promise you, the more you do that, the more you'll start to realize that in your everyday life now as an adult, you can continue to do things to really value yourself. Again, because I think a lot of what we do is avoid ourselves. I go to work. I have the same routine. I hang out with certain people that energetically I've connected with through my trauma and pain subconsciously, not even realizing it like attracts like. So we continue these same patterns. We don't even realize it. I'm at a job that maybe I don't like. Again, maybe I'm in a relationship that's not satisfying or fulfilling for me but it's comfortable and it's easy and it's something I'm used to. So we start doing all these different things where we're not really enjoying life and we're not feeling fulfilled and happy. And although happiness is a mindset and we have to create that for ourselves, how do we know how to create that if we don't believe that we're lovable or that we even deserve these things? Again, a lot of this is subconscious. So if you're saying, oh, I already do things that make me happy and I love my life. Okay, then you're fine, right? But again, if you're saying, yeah, my life's not super great, how can it be better? It gets better when your energy level gets better. It gets better when your vibrations are higher. By healing the wounds, every time you do that, you raise your vibrations so much that you only want, are going to start to want good things for yourself. I stayed in so many shitty situations. I'm embarrassed to even admit that or some of the things I've done. I allowed it. But now, like I said, with my friend, for example, when she's sitting there just saying all these negative things, I'm like, you have nothing positive. Sorry, I cannot talk today. (laughs) You have nothing positive to say right now. I'm going to excuse myself and I'd rather be alone with my own company because I'm happy with who I am now and I'm getting better at that and I'm really learning to value myself. So I'd rather be alone and go and find something that's entertaining for me or I'll go outside or I'll take a walk or I'll play sports or whatever makes me happy 
versus staying and listening to just nothing but negativity. So when the more you do things like that, that will make you so much happier. It'll make you feel better also. But we, we have to understand that it's okay for us to do that and that we deserve better by acknowledging that certain things are toxic. Because again, a few years ago, I would have been sitting there talking shit with her and we would have just sat there and been toxic together. That doesn't serve me anymore. And the more I heal, the more I realize that I don't want that. And I do deserve better. I deserve higher vibrations and so do you. So just think about all these things. I just want you to think about it. Continue to go and think about the inner child and things that you've experienced that didn't feel good. How have you carried that into your adult life? So just again, keep thinking about this. And every time you choose you, you are choosing self-love. So I'm very proud of you guys. And we are going to continue to consciously choose love. Even when we don't know how to do it, we're going to continue to try. And we're going to continue to learn because it's something that we can learn how to continue to do.